There we go. Yeah. It probably, it probably gave you a notification that I started. That's what I'm like, what was that? Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, did I do something? Yeah. I hung the jersey up because uh, our our jerseys are getting retired and I, I'll go into more depth on awesome. that thing later. Welcome, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hell yeah. So we got this figured out. Yeah, we're going to have to really, I really do want to look that up and see, uh, learn how to, uh, how to get the webcam thing working on Discord because honestly now it's just a, I don't really care that much. It's just, yeah. uh, as far as like using this or whatever platform, it's the, um, now I'm, it's, I'm curious as to why it won't show up on that. Like the guy I was talking to that I was telling you about, <clears throat> um, he didn't know how to – he's like, I was looking for a like a, a thing to pop up on my screen right, to yeah. say, hey, I'm getting a call. And I said, well, if you had a Windows PC, it, it does that. And he goes, oh, really? I said, yeah, man. Macs are great, but for versatility, they're, they're – no. Like they don't uh, – they <laughs> you have to – I don't think he knows how to use it that well. I don't know. I was going to say, it's like I um... – Did it pop up for you? No, I mean, I had the Discord already opened. Oh, gotcha. Um, can I, can you assume you like three seconds? I yeah, have roommates outside and they're being yeah. really loud. I don't want yeah, to interrupt yeah. the thing. Oh. Gotcha. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't know. We have a, we have um, this thing called Gasparilla tomorrow. It's imagine it like, um, like Mardi Gras. Yeah. But it's a like Tampa Bay tradition. Um, so it's a big like excuse for everyone to go out and party and really? drink and hang out. Yeah. It's, it's, the best way I can describe it is it's like Mardi Gras, but instead of being like a whole week, it's a single day. And it's always like the last Saturday of January. Which Holy means, shit. You're like, why would you do it in January? Well, because it's, it's Tampa, Florida, and it's 75 degrees here pretty much year round. Right. As an average temperature, you can do those things. That's, you know. So yeah. they're getting all their stuff together because they have to leave at like seven in the morning to uh. make sure they get, you know, good spots for the parade and, you know, to hang oh, out with cool. friends and it's like a you know massive like beer crawl mixed with a 5k and just events all that stuff it's a massive festival that's the word no shit I, I don't think i've ever heard of it yeah it's a pretty i didn't hear of it until i moved down here for college i had yeah. no idea what it was and then everyone's like you know you're in a college town or city and so it's it's all the craze i've never been big into that type of thing you know i'm typically working on the weekends anyway so i'm like eh, no big deal i'd rather go make money yeah it's just me and what kind of work do you do? So I actually work for uh, CIA Tampa, the field. Here. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, so I was watching Baby Goat's uh, podcast you guys did uh, when it was published. And so he, I didn't even know that, that he's actually the owner of Monk US. But I've been really lucky that I've gotten to work at the field that's now hosting some of the NSL events. We just had our um, Speaky B season this past calendar year 2022 we just yeah. opened back in may so we haven't even been open for a full year and then to be hosting some of the biggest tournaments in the world is absolutely phenomenal cia tampa hasn't yeah. even been open here no shit it's, it's a we new opened, field yeah we opened back uh first week of may holy shit oh, yeah okay first weekend of may yeah damn when i heard about it uh with of course you know i talked to baby goat and then um who was before that it was a uh, hudson um, the younger guy. H yeah, Hudson, Huddy. Huddy, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to call him Huddy, bro. That's his nickname, okay? Well, yeah, I was like, we know him as Hudson. He's a regular player at our field. I'm one of the refs. I also do all the social media. So, like, as soon as I saw Hudson, I'm like, oh, my God, it's Hudson. Like, I knew exactly. Yeah. Like, he's a regular at our field, yeah. Yeah, when he was talking about it, I'm like, okay, this this field has been around, you know, it's, I mean, has to have had been around for a long time. That's crazy, bro. It's, we just celebrated six months uh, back in November. Yeah. And then – you know, yeah, so we're we're coming up That's with like wild. whatever the math is now, like right. eight months That's something. Cool. Okay, so you guys, uh, well, give a little background on yourself. You're um, you are uh, Strike Force. Is that your uh, Strike? So what's your call sign? Yeah, I don't really have a call sign as so it, it's kind of it's kind of weird. I started out in Milsim and I slowly transitioned over to playing um, competitively Speedsoft. So I didn't really go by a call sign, if you will. I, I got like strike and the name like strike entertainment came from, I played soccer for 15 plus years and I started out as a striker. Yeah. So I just striker and then I 
I didn't like striker entertainment. That just sounded wrong. It just didn't, I didn't like the ring. So I went to strike. And so that's how I kind of got the nickname it was just, it was strike. And then when I moved over to play competitively, my nickname through my whole life, my name's Anthony. I just got ant, you know, so I'd just, I'd be ant. Oh, okay. So it, it, I never considered like a real nickname, if you will, or a call sign or anything like that. Okay. So, yeah. So and when you go to the field, what do they call you? Ant? When I'm playing, yeah, most of the guys that are there that I'm playing with all know me on a personal level. So it's Ant Anthony, just my personal name. The Strike Entertainment, like alias, is more just a YouTube right. alias. But the people who know me more on a personal level, both on YouTube and in person, know me by my real name. Gotcha. Okay. Hell yeah. Well, that works. Yeah, I mean, not everyone has a nickname. You know? Right. When um, I talked with uh, Nicole... And then, of course, Airsofter Sam, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's her name. Like, that's her, you know, it's not a nickname. It's, it's, it's like an name. alias. Yeah. You, you can have, like, even, like, it's an online, um, it's like an online identity, you know, that you, yeah. you work under almost. Yeah. I mean, my real name's Eric. Mm -hmm. And um, they, uh, a buddy of mine gave me a, a nickname, E-Rock years like 20 years ago mm -hmm. and uh and i've been using that for like gamer tags and shit like that right so that's what some i things use just here. stick oh yeah some yeah. things just stick and you roll with it you're like okay i don't mind Absolutely. the sound of that yeah it's, it's funny if i go to uh yeah i mean my family doesn't call me that if i go somewhere they don't say hey e-rock you know now mm -hmm. when i'm on when i'm gaming most actually most people just shorten it to e you know right There's that would like, make sense you know, what's up, E? You know, that kind of thing. So it's, uh, yeah. Hell yeah. So you, how did you get involved with uh, CIA Tampa? So that was, so that's an interesting one. I have to, I'll roll it back to like how I started because yeah. it was very, I started playing Airsoft back in 20, oh boy, 2016, but I wasn't like doing anything serious. I was running around with friends in the backyard. I was in eighth grade freshman year nothing crazy. My, I come from a military family. My dad served 23 years active duty in the Navy as Damn. an Intel officer. Okay. So I was always exposed to like the military life. My whole life I've moved all over the world. Oh, and so it's as weird as it sounds. I've been exposed to like guns and firearms my whole life. I'd go find a stick when I was like two or three years old and, you know, <laughs> run around with it with my younger brother. Exactly. And, you know, play dress up and do all that stuff and play army. And, and so as I got older, I had always kind of just been interested in the the firearms community. And, and as I got, you know, real, you know, adult money, if you will, I started slowly phasing in and playing it. And I got interested. I'm like, yo, this is a lot of fun. It's good exercise. You know, it's, you know, great entertainment. I get to meet a lot of cool people. And then I reached my senior year of high school and I was going to ask for my 18th birthday. I really wanted a GoPro because I had picked up this just random hobby of, I just really enjoyed editing like anything I could find, just even on iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. Really? There's a, I have a somewhere, I would have to dig, really dig for it. A montage that my brother and I made from Battlefield 4, like a Kill Streak montage back in 2014. Oh, shit. It, it, I'm looking, I, I remember seeing it. I'm like, okay, this is complete ass looking at it now. Yeah. Um, But it's, you know, long history of it. I got the GoPro and I just kind of started editing something really, really basic on on iMovie. I published it on YouTube, not thinking anything of it. And I just had picked up some attention from fields that like, it's like, Oh, this is kind of cool. Like he started kind of building that, you know, identity. And I grew up in Rhode Island. So, oh, and that's okay. how I ended up meeting Garrett is I played for in a field called Troy city in fall river, Massachusetts for a couple of years. And I met another friend of mine who I still play with. We went up to Bridgewater and that's how I ended up meeting Garrett. Garrett was actually at the next table over with one of his friends. And we just kind of randomly hit it off. And we kind of just made this, like, just group. Started hanging out, playing airsoft. So what? Big deal. We went off to college, did our own thing. But we kept in touch over the years. I'm down in Florida. And Florida really didn't have a massive indoor scene for airsoft, at least in the Tampa area, which is interesting when you think right. Florida. It's hot. Right you now you want something all year round. And I was doing like a Google search mm -hmm. after I was kind of going through a really, like a kind of a really tough time in my life back in my sophomore year of college. 
I had a lot of free time on my hands, stuff going on in my personal life. I'm like, I need some, I need an escape. And airsoft was my thing. Okay. I couldn't have my gear while I'm on in college on campus because you know you can't have anything firearms related, and it makes sense. I did a Google search and CIA popped up and they weren't even open. This was in January. So this was uh, literally a year ago. I was finding them almost exactly a year ago to the date. Yeah. Emailed my now boss and said, oh, I like, you know, I've been playing airsoft, really would like to come check it out. Went down to the field and just fell in love. I started help building things, got really good friends with the owners who are now my bosses and just kind of helped build the their community and i don't want to take credit for the things that they've done because with i could have not been there and they still would have been where they were today but i was so happy to be able to get on board with that stuff and they switch you over playing competitively if you will so it's a you know, kind of yeah. a long story but not really shorten it yeah no, that's good yeah no don't shorten it it's good <laughs> it's, i like to hear all those stories that's uh you know I, I'm, I'm very interested in uh and in how people get started and how they end up where they're at, you know? Yeah. And I'm and still now. going, hopefully, you know, as yeah. I'm still young, I got time and the way the sport's progressing and growing, you know, hopefully I caught it right at the end, right at the meeting point where it's going to then really just take off. Dude, it's fucking blowing up like crazy right now. Yeah. It really is. Hey, speaking of the, um, speaking of that battlefield montage thing, I did the same thing, right? And do you remember, I don't know if you, um, on Xbox years ago, they had, uh, an app built in video editor it might still be on there that you can access. It's and called like mixer or something other. Is it? It's, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is called something like that. So I used it one time I created a, a same type of thing. I was fucking, I was, this is, I was, uh, this is a few years ago before I was able to start working again. So I was stuck at home, but I was mm -hmm. still able to, you know, um, use my hands to, to play right. a game. So I was playing nonstop, bro. Nonstop. I mean, no life in this shit. Okay. <laughs> and I'm roid raging by the way. Okay. Cause I was on steroids at the time, uh, to help me kind of move around. And, uh, and I was sleeping like two hours a day. So I was playing call it, or, um, battlefield, battlefield four, battlefield four, battlefield four, like nonstop, bro. And, um, I made, uh, I was getting really good at, um, using the RPG seven, and uh -huh. taking out and and taking out helicopters i mean from okay. far away bro yeah because you shoot like i'd shoot you know out of a hundred shots you know um i don't know if you remember the map flood yep um everyone oh, yeah. would get on that top middle building i hated that because <laughs> you had a good sniper only, that would get up there you were done for you only hated it if you weren't up there bitch okay? oh absolutely yeah <laughs> so uh i i mean on that map you know i'm at the uh, on the one side that you start kind of in the wooded area a little bit, you know, yeah, opposite the of the parking spawn. garage. Yeah. The yeah. And so uh, I'm over there and like on that mound of dirt that, you know, before you actually get to the buildings, which is r pretty much right by your spawn. Yeah. There's a uh, little bird flying, coming around the top of that, um, that giant building, you know, the tallest yeah, the building where everybody building. was at yeah. Yeah, in the middle. And he came around twice and I fired at him like three times. The last time I hit him and I'm that far away, dude. It, it, it was so cool. Anyway, I made, I made a montages like that, you know, just like RPG kills with the, just fuck it. I'd be running. You'd hear it. Cause I'd have my headset on and I'd hear it coming around a building or something. I would switch to the weapon and just turn and shoot, you know, just blind fire shit. Um, and it was <laughs> so funny cause these guys would just rage, bro. And oh, you get, I, you know. I guarantee you, if you were good enough at it at that point, you've probably hit me one of those points. I have my brother has an unofficial world record in Battlefield for like the most kills in a single game. Holy he, shit! You wanted about no lifing. He had mastered every single gun in that game. Oh my tenfold. god! Yeah, like every every single gun. That's like crazy, knives, bro. Any launchers that could be shoulder fired that you could kill people with. Yeah, mastered pistols. He played the twenty four seven like max ticket locker games on the Xbox One. To the point where he got friends with like the owners of the server and he'd have guys messaging like nice hacks bro because he'd know all the little like corners you could yeah. run out of the map to jump up onto ledges right and he would just absolutely wreck people like i my dad and i would watch him you know you'd think you know I, my brother's only two years younger than me he's now off in college so yeah. we are close enough that we could you know have still similar interests so i'd sit there and I'd watch my little brother little brother 
play Xbox and just murk people. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I wait, like how many how many older brothers or older siblings can do you know that said I look up to my younger brother or younger sibling when they can do something? It's right, probably not common. I'm like, I wish I could do this stuff that you can. He just sit there like with his little maniacal laugh, get the message. Like that's another one. He had a tally going. He's like, I put a dollar in a jar every time I get a racist message on Xbox. I'm like, <laughs> and by one point he started buying Legos with it. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, that's awesome. It was pretty funny. That's hilarious. It, yeah, was, it was awesome. That's a, I mean, bro, to master all the guns, there's a it, shit ton of guns in that thing. Yeah, it was like a hundred and hundred and something, and then we had the premium, so we had all the premium guns as well. Right. Like, every gun possible weapon in that game mastered. Like, oh, that's crazy. No life, and then you know, it's like, oh, he's a nerd. He's got no life. He had a social life, perfect four point oh GPA, all this stuff. I'm like, God like, damn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he. I, I mean, I'm. That's he, awesome. It's supposed to be the I'm supposed to be the guest, but now I'm gloating about my brother. He's now off as a mechanical engineer on a full ride at Michigan, U Michigan. Holy now, shit! I'm like, I'm like, okay, okay, like good, good, good for you. Like seriously, like I'm genuinely happy. I'm like, wow. Okay, clearly Go you blue, got this. Man. Smart, Go yeah, blue. you got this. Oh man, we were watching the TCU Michigan game for oh football back home. Watching all that, we my whole extended family all bought Michigan like shirts. We're right. all there, and that was a. You want to talk about a roller coaster? Because we were doing shots every time that Michigan <laughs> scored. We were, oh, that's we awesome. Were gone, but yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, one of my buddies I was in the core with. Uh, he um, he grew up in Sterling Heights, which is right out, you know, right outside of Detroit. He's a, a Wolverines fan, and I grew up in Cleveland, so I was an Ohio State fan. So every oh, year boy. when they would play, you know, the rivalry game, uh, we'd call each other on landline phones okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah whenever if if ohio state won i'd call him if you know michigan yeah. won, he'd call me kind of shit so it was always fun but i've had a there's a handful of people actually um call sign tonka is mm -hmm. in florida uh, yeah. i don't know if you if you follow him he's on he's come over to our field a couple Has of he? times yeah well he's originally from michigan so he's a he's a wolverines fan he's a michigan uh, michigan fan good to know i'll have to bring that up to him next time i see him yes um, so when, you know, whenever they play, cause when Michigan beat Ohio state this past time, yeah, just, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, I messaged him was like, man, that was a good game. You know, it stung, but it, yeah. it was a good game. You know, Hell it's yeah, funny dude. you where in, uh, my, so you said you grew up in Cleveland, like in the Cleveland area In the Cleveland area. Yeah. Uh, my... it's a town called Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga falls. Okay. Um, it's right by Akron. Where, my uh, grandmother LaGrange. born and raised in Akron. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. So that's where my grandparents met. They went to college at at um, Akron, Akron U. U. Yep. <laughs> oh shit! And then I heard I was watching it. Think when you're talking to to Adam, baby goat, that yeah. uh, you you're you're doing a house renovation thing in like the Greenville area, South Carolina. Yeah. My grandparents are from Clemson. Oh my god. Yeah. So like I've grown up Clemson football like my whole life. Like Holy back, shit. Every, oh, bandwagon. I'm like, I've been watching since like Taj Boyd, like 09, 2010, when going to the Orange Bowl was right. a big deal. Like beating South Carolina was a big deal. Right. Like, like yeah. Because they because it wasn't easy back then. No. They were nine they were, and, you know, nine and three, eight and yep. four records before they were the undefeated, all that right. stuff. I've like, yeah, I grew up that. See, that's a, that's the thing. We've been in South Carolina for fifteen years. So we came down here in uh oh seven. Okay. And the first couple of years, uh, you know, South Carolina was like, they were neck and neck, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so it was like, it wasn't always just, and, and, you know, so recently in the last five, 10 years, whatever, people are talking like, you know, Clemson's always beaten. I'm like, not really. I mean, it goes in waves, but uh, the first couple of years we lived here, they were, uh, we, it was, it ended up being, it always was a good game, you know? Yeah. It always was. It was always uh -huh. based on whoever was playing at home was pretty much going to pull it out. Yeah. And Dude, yeah. this last, this year? Don't, don't, don't get me started. Don't. Bro. Don't. I was there. Uh, I mean, I was, oh, you were there. Well, no, I was, it, it, really, we're getting like really like personal life with my family, like family stories are just funny. We my, don't have to. It's okay. No, no, no. It's nothing bad. My, <laughs> so my grandmother being from Ohio, yeah. our Akron, Cleveland area, all has her family is still there. So they, and their whole, all their kids and families all gone to Ohio state. Right. We go up there for Thanksgiving periodically. So then when Michigan, Ohio state are playing now that Michael, my brother is in, is at uh, U Mish. We, of course, were watching the game, you know, massive jumbotron, you know, TVs, you know, nice. food, like a whole event. 
And then they were down in the basement watching the Clemson South Carolina game, and I was watching World Cup on my phone. So we had like five different sporting Holy events going shit. on at one time. So I'd be running up the stairs, you know, Michigan would score, yeah, and I go downstairs. What's that? Clemson's losing. Oh, <laughs> and it's a very big roller coaster. And and so yeah, I watched the end of the Clemson game, and we're like the the interception that DJ throws, and we're like, Are, there's no way we're losing this at home. It's the first time we lose in like 12 years or something like yeah. that, or 11 years, Long or something like that. And it's at home. I'm like, if it was on the road, okay, fine. But it's at home. Like we're breaking streaks, trying to get into the playoffs here. Yeah. Like, what has happened? Just absolute calamity. Yeah. And uh, it really was. Yeah. So that was that was grandparents were not a happy camper later that day. <laughs> that's for sure. Isn't that so wild? Like, uh, I love you know, I love having that kind of background. Like, you know, growing up in a family where my dad was big into you know football, and uh, there's something about when you grow up that way. Mm -hmm. And your, you know, your, your family is big into it. And so you have these events that are around, you know, kind of centered around football games and football teams and stuff. Right. Yeah. It carries over with you into your adult life. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's like, it's hard to get rid of. It's almost like it's in your blood. Like you were like just brought up this way and it's hard to get rid of. Like I've tried as a, I was also a Cleveland Browns fan. Okay. So for NFL grandmother is the same thing. So yeah. I get it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. disappointment for years, but um, you know, it's uh, you get used to it, but it's like, I really tried years ago, years ago. I really tried like, I, okay, this, like I just said in my head, this football season, I want to, really enjoy watching football. So I'm just going to flip the switch in my head and be rooting for whoever, somebody that's better. Okay. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Just pick some, I don't care. As long as it's not the Steelers. Cause that, that, that was our rivals, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and oh, plus yeah. here in South Carolina, South Carolina doesn't have their own team, you know, NFL team. So there's so many Steelers fans, bro. You know, there's just jump on a bandwagon. Oh, we're right. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. And, and Patriots fans. So yeah, they, I'm gonna uh, keep my mouth quiet on that one. <laughs> I'm from New England, so oh shit, yeah. And I'm like, I'm gonna be a Patriots fan. I love Tom Brady. I think he's fucking. He's a cool dude. Um, like a master at what he does. So, um, talk about focus, bro. Holy shit, this guy is like calm as one of the best under pressure. So, uh, anyway, so I'm like, I'm gonna be a Patriots fan. I just, I. I, I would do it. I would watch the games and I, you know, I played fantasy football and shit and mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't have, and I'd still watch those games, the Patriots games. And I'm like, Oh yeah, they're winning. You know, this is especially back when they were winning every everything. year, yeah, yeah. everything, every, all the year or all year. So I'm like, I, I just wasn't as excited. And then a Browns game would come on. I'm like, all right, here we go. And I'm getting my hands are getting sweaty. And I'm like, it's like a loyalty thing. It's like, weird. Why the fuck yeah. can I let that go? I don't get it. It's so weird. Yeah. It's, it's a cool, I got a, it's a cool story that, so with Brady, when he, his contract ended with the Patriots, he then signed to come down to the Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. I, that was the, uh, what was that? That was the end of the 2019, 2020 season. Yep. So COVID hadn't started. I had just signed my letter of intent to, to go to the university of Tampa, which is where I'm at now for college. Yeah. He then signed the contract with the Buccaneers like two or three days later and oh, Gronk geez. then followed him. So I'm like, Oh my God. Like, like Patriots fan. Yes. I'm a Tom Brady, like diehard Tom Brady fan. Like gotcha. that is my idol. Like, my, you know, and it was, who's your idol? Like, you know, the icebreaker questions you get in school. One person you could have a dinner with Tom Brady, like yeah. not even second guess. And he signed his letter of intent or his contract comes down to Tampa, wins a Super Bowl, And then he drives with Gronk right through campus one time on his car to go back home. They have the boat parade right on the, right on the river. Right. On the, when they do that river, one side is downtown. The other side is my campus. Shit. Okay. So the, the video that went viral on ESPN where he throws the Lombardi trophy across the, like across the water to a different boat and Gronk catches it. Yeah. That was right in front of my campus. So I watched <laughs> the happen with my own eyes and I'm just like, it's Tom Brady. Like I was so, Oh my know, God. My friends will tell you, they hear Tom Brady. Like, yep. There's anything going on about Tom Brady again. <laughs> Fanboy. That's okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I say, where's his Jersey at? Where, where's that hanging up? It's sitting in my drawer. Actually. Oh, you have one. Up. Nice. Yeah. It's, a, it's on, a t-shirt. Wear it on game days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a rough season this past season. So yeah. I, you know, 
I'd support him and then the, his whole stuff with the family. Like I've his house or his former house on Davis Island, it used to be um he was renting from Derek Jeter actually. And oh. he was paying like we looked into it, like forty eight thousand dollars a month yeah. for rent. Nah. You know, I know where like I knew where his house was. Um I so I drive by it all the time. I actually saw him out in his front yard throwing the football around with his kids, funny enough. And you know, you're not I don't say you're not supposed to be back there. It's just Knowing the locals on that island know, mm. but he's literally just outside of Tampa or was. Yeah. So you could go – if you knew where the house was, you could, like, drive by and, like, look at it and whatnot. And if you were lucky, you know, the neighbors have said, oh, yeah, we'll see him ride, you know, have – walk in with, you know, the kids are on their bikes and doing his thing. And, you know, he's just like an everyday citizen, and that's what I think people forget. You know, it's Tom Brady, right. but he's also – he's still a human being at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, right. You know, like, people bro. forget that. You know, it's – yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's uh, you realize that what, you know when you hang out with certain people. Sometimes I don't know why we get like that. Like, oh my god, this person is so important. Like, they're not even human anymore. Right. You um, give them like a god complex almost. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 For sure. And that you know, on their end, they're going, what? Well, I'm just. It's just yeah, me. They, like, it's really exactly. just me. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you run know? into that issue of them, like, like, well. You know, not even saying like being dehumanized, but it's almost like you look at them from the idea rather than yeah. the actual like person. Right. And it's like, you know, I'm still a person in the day. I'm, you know, I still have my, my, yeah. my motives, my drives, my morals. And people just get so hung up on the idea of what we think they are rather than yeah. the actual person that they are. This would get really philosophical. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, but, I mean, yeah. it does sometimes. It does. It does. But it's true. That's, you know, the, yeah, I, you know, I, <sighs> Sometimes we uh, we hold them to a higher standard, right. as if, oh, you you can't act like that. You can't do that. You're you're a celebrity, you know. It's like I what did, the it's fuck? Not, it's not our job. It's they're human beings. They do their own thing, you know. Yeah, it's... like why why would you think they wouldn't exactly do something normal? You know what? Let the hell? them be a human being. You, you probably do it yourself. You just don't want to admit it out loud. Oh yeah, right. If you had that type of money and fame, you'd probably be doing some of the same stupid shit oh, that they're doing. Oh my god, right? for real, bro. Come on now. I mean, I mean, for real. I've I've talked about this with people and I'm like, just really try to pretend. Pretend. Just pretend. You're making okay, you get a check every month for, I don't know, three million dollars. Okay. Every month. Okay. And they're and and as I'm talking with people, you know, they're just like and these are just not on here, you know, but talking like family members, you know, as they as they criticize the the wealthy people, you know, that act, we, you know, I'm like, the, bro, there's just a dude, you know, it's just this, like another guy. It's so he, right. he's very good at this or he's done this. He's had some great accomplishments, but they're really, you know, we don't have to hold them to these high standards. We would be in the same boat if we, act, you know, if we had that kind of money and fame. And I really think fame fucks people up, man. It's that. Know. uh what is it's i forgot what it was i remember it was funny i was taking a class on this in in school uh like a what was it like a human sociology like criminology style class of just kind of getting yeah. into the the psyche of the of the the mind and the person and all this and it's all about that idea of what we think something is or someone is and that we get almost this really perverse infatuation of that we for some reason accredit fame as importance it's it's social validation is what it turns into uh, gotcha you know people want to be socially validated that's why you turn into like the things with like on social media why followers and likes are so important uh-huh so, because people want to be validated at the end of the day and yeah you know when that comes down to an issue of people have a problem of self-validation rather than they need external validation you know what mm. i'm saying gotcha. and that could really make a big difference i've noticed if you can validate yourself internally you don't need other people's validation to do anything you want right it's all about that driving that motivation factor like hey i can do this i put my mind to it that's self-motivation right you know rather than oh you're so good at this i think you should do that and you have other dr outside driving forces sure those are great but if you don't have internal motivation to do anything you'll never get anything done yeah no my shit opinion. right yeah oh i agree i agree and uh, you know people are always like man i got I want to work out. I'm just not motivated. I'm like, no, bro, it doesn't work that way. You got to work out to get motivated. Like it, it really does. You've got to take action first. Right. You're not going you to, the feelings will come later. You, you can right. find something. It doesn't even have to be overly crazy. I mean, you see, you know, 
on social media all the time that like guys for me, like my age, the trend is for gym motivation turns into like a really bad breakup or some sort of relationship falling out. And it's a driving factor. And speaking from experience, that is a huge factor. You realize yeah. it's a whole, it's that motivation to do something is I was this, I didn't like what I was. So I'm going to change that, mm-hmm. you know, and then it's then sticking with that motivation after it's the, the reason falls away. You're then motivated. It's like, I'm doing this now for myself. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where I think people, that bridge gets lost. People then get, they start because they're trying to prove something or someone wrong. And then as soon as they stop caring about what's motivating them, there's no motivation left. And they then tailor off and then just like, they go back to doing what they did beforehand because there's the motivation goes away. For sure, man. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of motivation, you, uh, you were motivated to, work at CIA Tampa and that's what you do now. Mm -hmm. And you also play there and you're on a team. Yep. Uh, Did you start that team? No. So the, so the way that it kind of started was I, you know, I showed up, we started building the field and then we got in touch with uh, my boss, Mikey. So I got to give a big, I got to give shout outs to pretty much everybody because that's not possible without, without you know them doing these things one of my bosses mikey and garrett who are really good friends uh, they met playing counter-strike back in the day they got this really counter strike buddy oh like not like csgo but like the original the original counter-strike yes yeah you know they're old farts as they'll say um they got (laughs) you know they met garrett is from uh detroit michigan so he had motor city airsoft back up there Mikey and then my other, my final boss, Chris, they were consultants at a restaurant company. Mikey and Garrett knew one another. Garrett proposed this business idea. Mikey's like, all right, cool. They pulled Chris in and the three of them started working together and they built what is now CIA. You know, it's in, it's like five or six minutes outside of just east of downtown Tampa. Mm. They built it, got in touch with Roy, the owner of SpeedQB and said, hey, we're trying to build a, a, official championship level course for yeah. speakeby to compete because the thing was is that speakeby is huge on the west coast it's where it started it started right. in paintballs like backyard southern california that whole thing but there was never anything on the east coast to mimic or represent that for the east coast player base i mean you know you have we have a massive country you know you can't right. compare like nsl where nsl has one field in the netherlands that services the whole country and most of western europe the U.S. is bigger than the entire continent of Europe, yeah. practically. So you have to have multiple fields. There's, a, you know, SS up in Atlanta, and then you have Extreme Airsoft in Rhode Island, which was a field that I kind of started playing at very, very, in a very preliminary stage of my life. And then, but Speedsoft wasn't a thing up north; like it did not exist until yeah. I moved away for college, and then it just it imploded. It just really? went crazy. It was not a thing. Yeah, because we we had indoor fields, but they just speed QB or just speed soft in general was there. But you play on like a public setting, like on your public skirmish fields, you would an indoor. Oh. There was never courses like you would for like speedball. Oh, uh, okay. This then Florida and you know the southeast with SS and Atlanta, they kind of role modeled what was the premier field on the East Coast. They were hosting the East Coast Championships, so we tried to mimic and give a, another experience for the all the entire state of Florida mainly. Got in touch with that, and Roy really kind of hooked us up. Was you know, was a really, really good friends of ours. Now, like, you know, big shout out to Roy and Speaky B and everything that they do. And they said, you know, fuck it, let's start hosting a Florida Invitational tournament. So our opening, our grand opening weekend, SYG and Speaky B flew out to Florida and hosted a grand uh, opening tournament here. Yeah, and we had ten teams sign up. And we played, you know, two groups of five, best top four from each group move on and played a bracket. And then there was a winner. And uh, um, a team that's from the, like, just north of Orlando, LSA one, who's a good friend of ours, that team that comes in and plays with us all the time. And that's when it kicked off. It just, Speaky B's like, all right, that was a trial run. We want to see what community we got. Clearly, you guys have a dedicated fan base. Let's make this happen. Mm. And we then just, they just started building the season out, the whole like national season. We hosted qualifiers in August and September and then hosted like a regional, like a really big regional championship that you would see. Um, And it was all for the East Coast. You had one in Georgia, Florida, Rhode Island, and Indiana. And the team, the CIA team 
that we had started back in like June after the May event. Yeah. You know, we're like, oh, let's give it a shot. We want to have a competitive team to represent the field because that's how you get exposure is, you know, you got your big fields out on the West Coast N one tax city, you know, SC village, like they have house teams. Mm. That is how you get your exposure from a marketing. Really? You don't know the field, you know, their team like SYG tax city, you know, N one LTD, you know, asylums field up in Sac County. Like those, if you don't know the field, you know, the team or vice versa. Right. And that was the premise. Get a good team. You need to have a good team to know for your field to be marketed. And funny enough, we ended up having, we went our whole season and we ended up winning the regional championship. So we got the massive uh, UFC, <laughs> WWE looking belt. Like I've got the picture on my Instagram. Yeah, I saw that on there. Now, okay. We ended up winning that. And that was due in part mainly to my friend, Luke, who I go to college with. Yeah. Uh, speeds off Luke. Former Ned player, which if you don't know what Ned is, Ned was like the one of the best teams in the country, speed soft wise. They he's from Georgia, played at SS, and he came oh, to shit. college with me. Ran into him by just random spur of the moment. Was walking out of uh, of his dorm room, and I saw him with the backpack. It was a Speaky B backpack, and I'm like, "That's an airsoft backpack. There's no way anyone who's not in the industry would have that." Right. Found him on Instagram, DM'd him, and we just got in touch. And I brought him into the CIA stuff. He started coaching, teaching, and then playing, and he brought us from literally nothing to then winning a regional championship. So, you know, that's another big shout out to go uh, speed stuff, Luke, and whatnot. And the the last little bit I'll say on that is we ended up doing a a full feature length documentary actually on it is, and that's kind of what my job is turned into at work is I'm in charge of all the social media for the field. Yeah. So I run all, all, you know, the things you see on Instagram and YouTube, we made a full, it's 70 minute long documentary spanning from May of 2022, all the way to December of 2022, following our entire season, like Friday night lights, uh, like your big sports documentaries that you've seen, like the, yeah, we did, I made, or I, we, you know, I directed it and edited right. it all, but my guys wouldn't have made it possible unless they, without them performing and we made the whole thing so i can send you right. that link yeah yeah is that on your youtube channel it's on the cia's youtube yeah oh it's cia's doing, it's doing really yeah i put most of the stuff i edit for uh for the field i obviously turn over for them to use because it's a it's it's designed for them right right um, and yeah it's been incredible the feedback that we've gotten it's like this is one of the because it's never been done in airsoft before as a yeah. as a up close and personal documentary Dude, while I was waiting for this thing to uh, uh, save, I followed CIA Tampa, and um, yeah, and actually, I found uh, your buddy too, um, Speed Soft Luke. Yep, that would be Luke, and yeah, so he's basically because I know I'm gonna get shit for this from him later oh, shit. i'm gonna figure out how i word this not like not he's just you know we're two college kids we're both really really good friends so it yeah. you know rubbins racing type stuff he's basically like not basically he is he is now our captain for our team so where we left the documentary is after we won our regional we then decided we realized that having a team named that's competing at the field named after the field doesn't always sit the best because you can imagine you could get into like a bias, the issue and favoritism and all this. Sure. So we decided to go on the, the rebranding route. So we're still obviously the team for CIA, but we're not under the CIA name. Mm. We're not, you know, we're not wearing like, like the Jersey that's up here. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their colors. You can see the CIA, you know, all that stuff on there. Gotcha. We've now moved over to being called obey airsoft coalition, mm. which, so we just go by obey mainly. And we switched up, went with different colors of like a black battleship gray and like a red, like a blood red color. Nice. Um, and it opened us up to some more sponsors, but we did that to allow us to not have to run into some of those issues. Right. And so we've been doing all, of, you know, in the off season, all of the promotion, all of the building, the foundation work to now rebuild a a franchise, if you will, like a new a, a new entity, a new team, a, a you know, in, in the community. So we're going to probably have to deal with the whole, like, oh, you guys are CIA's team. We are. I mean, we are the only house team that CIA has. We yeah. have other teams that are play at our field, but we're the only sponsored team 
that, you know, when you say as like, well, who's your team? That's them. Like you are, we are their team. Luke has now moved over. He was a co-captain last season. He's now moved over to being the official captain of the gotcha. team. You know, with his experience, he's got like probably five or six years worth of competitive experience now at this point. Nice. Um, he's taught all of us to just go from being knowing little to nothing to now being a regional champion. Um, and then I got pulled in actually slightly unbeknownst to me. I was found out in a team meeting of, I was knit late, excuse me. I was named the alternate captain for the team. I'm like, I mean, awesome. Cause I, I picked up a coaching role during the, the speaky B season as I just felt as if it was a little bit, it was best suited to where I felt that was needed. Yeah. I can play. I'm not a, I'm not a bad player, but I felt as if the role, we needed someone to fill in that leadership role off the field. Gotcha. It was already taken care of on the field. We need someone off the field to keep everybody in line, keep people's heads up, the motivation, the, you know, yeah, the, the strategy side of things. Cause we had Mikey and Garrett were coaching and helping, but if they're also running the store, it gets really right. difficult for them to kind of split. You need someone who's not, has all that responsibility. So I took over that role. And I absolutely love it. I mean, it doing all the logistics, doing all the coaching, the the strategy, the you know, the hype man running. I've absolutely, you know, it's kind of like a dream come true. As nerdy as that sounds, I yeah, I wouldn't change it, trade it for the world. Um, but yeah, so I've moved over to that role, but now I still play because NSL, which is our main focus. I know Adam has talked a lot about this, and I think Hudson mentioned a little bit as well is instead of it being only five on the field and you only have like seven deep on a roster with NSL being both attack and defend, mm -hmm. you have two like units, like an offense and a defensive line, like you would in football. Right. I'm now playing as the core members of the defense as being one of the captains for the team. Yeah. I'm over on the defense, keeping all that stuff down. Luke's over on the offense. And then we're, you know, mingling ideas and thoughts from, you know, each other and what's going on. So we have at least leadership in either direction, if you will. And I've, you know, I've been, I'm really excited for the NSL thing. You know, they start their event tomorrow, you know, tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'm going to be up at the ass crack of dawn tuning in because I'm watching all every game possible from a film perspective. And I keep referencing Adam and baby goat because a lot of the things he said is very similar to what I will say the filming perspective of knowing what other teams are capable of, especially going in is no one knows anyone's capabilities. Mm -hmm. Film is your best friend. Right. I can't tell you the amount of hours of content that I've watched that I've made, you know, from just sitting at a, at a screen editing and moving things. I can tell you how teams move now. It's just over and over and over again. Right. And it's a real, you know, critical piece in order to be successful. And especially at this level now of the game, sure. You want to be the best, you know, you want to talk about practices and stuff like that. We practice, you know, unofficially every single day. We've got guys in there playing, but our official where everyone has to be there. Yeah. Six hours on a Sunday. Gotcha. For six hours in one time. And we're doing, you know, an hour of cardio, hour of meetings. And, you know, we only scrimmage each other at the end for like 45 minutes. Because as well, that's great. There are technical pieces that are more important. Everyone can play the game just fine. You got to, we're worried about fine tuning those technical pieces, your breakout drills, you know, how quickly can you get to some of those bunkers mm -hmm. and get yourself set to go? And, you know, not without spoiling anything of what we're doing is like, we're quick. I will say yeah. that to any of the teams that are wondering, you know, okay, this, you know, the old CIA team, whatever, we might have the same names on our jerseys and the same people. We're not like the same team anymore. You know, we're a lot faster. We're a lot more honed in a lot. I have a better idea of what we're doing. So I would hope we're optimistic that we're going to definitely be a, a force to be reckoned with this season. I I, I would say when Not you sure. guys, when you guys do the uh, drills uh, mm -hmm. or I guess in a game with NSL, the way the rules are mm -hmm. where, uh, so if you're on offense, yeah, you have the flag. Is that yes. right? Or you don't have, okay. Yeah. So you have the flag and what, what is, um, this is something I forgot to ask uh, baby goat and um, Houdini or whatever, when you're talking about it, when you have the flag, what is – you just stand back and, and wait? Like so, how do you gain points? So that's a great question because that is one of the biggest questions we've gotten. 
with the different leagues, because we're competing in all three of the leagues in the country, you got NSL, SpeedQB, and CSL. And I like to equate them. Some people get mad at me for it, but I feel like a lot of people share the similar opinion. I equate each league as like a division you would in college sports. NSL mm -hmm. is division one. That is your pro, or to make it easier, division one or professional sports, NSL. Right. SpeedQB is your collegiate level or your division two. It's nationally recognized. People know what it is, but from a professionalism standpoint, they're still getting there, and it's still more of a game, if you will. Right. And CSL is only regional. It's only played on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. It's fairly still entry level from what I've seen. Now, it doesn't mean there's not good teams playing. It's just the level of right. competition is just not – seems seems to not be on the same level – as some of the other leagues, not to knock anyone else playing in them, but that's just what I've observed. Sure. When it comes to the points or how it's won, NSL is the most complicated. It is a sport, like without a doubt. Yeah. Typically with SpeedQB, you had a flag that would sit in the middle of the field on like the X barriers. And the goal was to get, it'd be a neutral flag. And you'd have to get that flag to the other team's bike breakout wall. Kind of like pressing the buzzer in paintball. Yep. Similar. Gotcha. Um, where either team can score. And, you know, you just go down to like, you know, you get to like a point system and that's just not worth getting into. You just the whole goal is if you got that flag to the other team's wall, you'd win the round. NSL is played more like football where the offense starts with the flag on the breakout wall. And like an offense would in football, you now need to try and get it as far down the field to score. You have different oh, okay. zones, if you will. If you get past... If you break up the 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 defending half where the defensive side would be, if you broke it into in each half, you have your offense and your de defensive side of the field, if you will. If you that defensive side is broken into three like areas, zones. If you get past half field and then like an extra five feet, that's your first zone. That's one point. Another five feet, that's zone two, that's two points. And then your final third, like you would in hockey, is your zone three, that's three points. If you hang it, it's like scoring a touchdown or a try in rugby or football. And you touch the flag of the wall, it gives you between 12 to 10 points depending on your tries, if that makes sense. Tries are like downs. Hmm. You're kind of following. You see how this can get really complicated if you don't yeah. know the rules. Your tries, you have three tries. So it's like your three downs. Instead of four downs, you have three. If you score yeah. on your first try, you know, your first on the first down, and you hang the flag, touch it to the wall, that's 12 points. Boom. Okay, so first try would be, um, or a try counts as uh, at least somebody's left on the field. Right, so to, you to, still have to eliminate people. So your first try could be like, so you're playing five on five, whatever, you shoot everybody, and then, you know, the offense dwindles down the the defense and they eliminate them all. You then have a three, you got three seconds to haul ass and get it to the wall, because if you don't get in that three seconds, it doesn't count, and it just goes to wherever you are in the zones. Is that it's like so you have to be very strategic with knowing how many people are alive and where they are so your flag carrier can work their way up progressively. You can't do it like speak QB where you sit all the way in the back, yeah. wait for everyone to die, and then just run because it's not a guaranteed hand. You need to be up, like up, so up the defense. Once ass. everyone once the last person on defense is is out is shot, you have three seconds to touch You'll the flag. You'll hear like a wall. buzzer. You'll hear like a like an air horn buzzer that will go off. That's your three second warning that you better, you know, haul ass. And, and you gotta it. sprint to touch the wall. Touch the wall or get oh, as shit. far into those zones as you can. So that's your first try. So say if you don't get it, whatever, and yeah. the buzzer goes and you don't get it, your first try, you know, you get to zone two. You've got you didn't points. get a touchdown, you got whatever. You now points. go to down two. You yeah. got a sec the second try. You redo it again. Say you get to zone three. Now you're at five zero. You have three tries to try it. If you don't get on your third try, it's in a turnover on downs. You then switch. Defense goes to offense, offense Holy to defense, shit. and then you run it back. This is why – okay, this is why Houdini and Adam said uh, it's just like football. It is. on on uh, For Airsoft, yeah. And for the people who don't – who are like, okay, this sounds really complicated. That's why I use the analogy of football. Right. It's because it really is like football. The things where it starts getting complicated is when you get into the specifics of – so if you score on your first – like your first down, your first try, that's 12 points. Right. Your second try, it's 11. Third try, it's 10. If you score, there's then like an extra point. Like you kick a field goal. You do a 1v1. So the offense would select one guy and the defense would select a guy. And you have 30 seconds though. 30 Holy seconds shit. you need to eliminate and it's the same so if you eliminate offense 
kills the defender, you can then technically run it over and walk it. There is no three second as long as you're in that 30 second window. Right. Defense eliminates the offense. It's just negated. It's like a blocked field goal or a failed two point conversion. Whatever. Holy shit. So it's it's really intense. And you know what's wild to me is so NSL started in the uh, is yeah. Yeah. Not not American football. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like but it's it's really set up. Like these sound a lot like I know you're Yeah, it's you're, very you're, Americanized though. Right. That that you know, that setup sounds a lot like that. So uh if if you don't let's say you get to zone three or two or whatever on your first try. Mm-hmm. Your second try, does do you start all the way back at the walls again? You start oh, okay. all the way back at the walls. Okay. Yeah, you run it back again. I gotcha. So the th- and so where you get like really technical is I was trying to figure out. So now you got to get to down to the defense's perspective because you're like, okay, well on defense, all you got to do is just stop them. What's the bit? He's like, okay, that doesn't seem all that hard. Yes, the defense is a lot easier because all you really do is just kind of anchor it down and just try and make a stop, just make a hold, yeah, like hold them. If you say the flag runners running up the middle of the field, whatever, and you and you shoot them, they have to drop the flag and then they need to run off the field like they're out. If the defense can run over and slide in and grab the flag or touch it with their hand and hang it up, like hold it up, whatever, it's called a snatch. It's like a, a recovering a fumble or, yeah. or interception or whatever. That's an instant turnover on downs. It's a tur- change oh, of possession. St- game stops, it switches. The way the game ends is based off of either mercy rule, which they just updated the rules not even 24 hours ago, so I have to look at what the specific score for Mercy Rule is. Oh, gotcha. It's a clock like you would in paintball. There's 15 minutes on the clock. That clock runs continuously while playing right? unless there's a 1v1 going on. So mm. once that 15-minute game clock ends, game is over. Whoever's got more points wins. Mm-hmm. They've just recently added, which from coming from a soccer player's perspective, this is fucking awesome – is they would run into issues of ties. If you have a tie, let's say, and you're in a bracket where you have to have someone win, right? they turn into like a shootout like you would in hockey or soccer. So you nice. do your 1v1s with a flag. So you have an offensive guy and a defensive guy would go, you know, offense will go for team one. They yeah. get a stop, then it's a block, and then you switch. Then the guy who's on defense then goes. And it's whoever gets the most hangs out of the best of five moves on, like a penalty shootout. Holy shit. So that gets really – because then you have to select five people to do it. Right. And they might not even go. You might only need three. Like you right. have to come in clutch. So that's why we've been getting on everyone. You know, we have our specific guys who are going to do our 1v1s, but we've been harping on people. It's like, hey, just because you're not doing 1v1s don't mean that you get to slack off and be kind of complacent. You got to be ready to go. You might – someone might get right. hurt. Someone might have to fill in like – Yep. None of that. I told the <laughs> I told them that, and it's it's funny. Because being a 21 year old talking to a bunch of guys who are some of them have kids that are you know that are adults like full on adults established in the world world talking to them from an authoritative like position is yeah, really like you're, strange you're for the me. coach like yeah. right and so I've tried to make that line clear of you know hey we're all still friends at the end of the day but you know when we're on the field business is business I don't mean it in any sort of rude way but like you know shit's got to get done. If you want to yeah. be the best, we got to play like that. You know, what was the quote I was thinking of? Um, is practice like you're the best. What was uh, or think you're the worst, play like the best or something along that line. Gotcha. To kind of keep yourself humble. And we were running into an issue of guys being like, well, I'm assigned to the defense. Why do I have to go play offense? I said, next time I hear someone say, I play defense. Why am I switching? Everyone's running laps. Bro, for so real. You have to play both sides. Someone gets injured. Someone's moving <laughs> yes. over to fill that slot. That, right. You know, I Not only get that, but what if, what if it comes down to the tiebreaker? Right. And you're one of the better players, but you're only play defense. Like, exactly. Now you got to run offense. Like, duh. You need to know all the strategies for all that shit. Right. It's not like, you know, I know like in football in high school, you have guys who will play both sides of the ball because you don't usually have the depth to play like a 55-man roster. So a quarterback will play then a safety on defense in high school. It's (laughs) the same idea. Yeah, I was middle linebacker and a tight end. Exactly. So it's (laughs) the exact same idea. You have to know how to play. Oh, well. (laughs) <laughs> I never played football, so I can't speak to any of that stuff. But, <laughs> but you get the idea. Is that yeah, you didn't dude. know how both dude, sides this of it is, works. Uh, this is the do. first time I've heard all of these you know, extra rules <laughs> that you're talking about uh, in depth. I, I didn't – I guess I didn't know what to ask 
at, when I was talking with uh, Houdini and Adam and uh, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. So um, this is way more interesting now. It, like it, it really it, makes me want to watch me, wow. the games even oh, yeah, more. Absolutely. <laughs> the best thing is, cool. is that the first event, so the way that they're doing it and I can't remember of how much depth Adam went into. I know Adam went into more of the international right. side of things. Yeah. We're looking at it from the national perspective at the moment because international as optimists as we want to be, we still have to be realistic at the same time. Sure. We feel like we could have a chance at being one of the best top three teams in the country. Absolutely. But you need to be realistic at the same time. If that doesn't happen, that's not the focus. We have to get to nationals before we can focus on an international you know, stage. Right, right. So for the way that it's now working, they've got those four seating events. The first one is in Indiana and it starts tomorrow at 830 in the morning. So I definitely would recommend it's 830 a.m. I um, think it's Eastern central time. time. If they have it listed as central, that, that would make sense. I don't They're, know, actually. Let's let's find out. Where's it I know on their um, – It would be – It's on their YouTube, right? Yeah, it'll be listed as their live stream on YouTube. Um, either way, it's – I would feel like they usually broadcast their times unless it's specifically set to Europe. Like if they're trying to tailor it to the European audience, it'll be set to a European time. If it's US, they're usually tailoring it to their East Coast time. It's yeah, usually I mean, what they'll do. They're not going to start – uh, you know, players aren't, they're not going to open the field at 2 a.m. to no, play. The, like it's, the, they open the doors at 7 a.m. I just saw the DM right. from one of the referees. And I think, you know, track. shot, this is at shot zone, right? They're at, yes. um, they are central time. I think they're an hour behind you and me. So, yeah. but I wasn't sure if they have the stream time set to premiere. Oh, at, yeah. Okay. Know, because I know the game, the actual matches start at 8.30 a.m. their time. Yeah. But I know the stream will start at 8.30 our time because they'll have an hour of pregame, like pregame briefings, talks, you know, rules, all that. So I highly recommend, you know, you know, to even sit down. I know Adam said to sit down for a couple of hours to just watch them play. They have the whole schedule of all the teams listed that are playing and when they're yeah. playing, all of that. I'm – you know, I know this video is not going. It's going to go out after the event, so I'm not really worried about anything I say just now. Is I'm watching yeah. the East Coast Energy team, which is the team that's based out of Extreme in Rhode Island. I had the pleasure of actually playing with a group of them when I went home for Christmas break. I went out to Extreme because you know it's 20 minutes from where I live. Yeah. I played with some of them, and you know I, I'm keeping an eye on them because it's an interest. You now they're new, they're young, and I'm intrigued. And from a strategic standpoint, I'm curious to see what they're capable of. Hmm. Um, so I'm keeping, I'm watching all of their matches for sure. Not trying to like sound like I'm fanboying, but it's mainly a curiosity piece. For I sure. know what Murder Inc. can do. I know what Elite can do. I've seen them play. Right. I played HS HSA. Um, SCA will be interesting to see. Uh, I have seen them play from the event that they did for NSL back in October. I watch a little bit of their stuff. So I have an idea of what they're looking like. I've seen a little bit of Tacos play, nothing against Adam. Uh, I've watched them play, but I'm curious to keep it on the teams who I've never seen anything of, as you can imagine from a sure. strategical standpoint. You have no idea what you will expect. You oh, need yeah. to have an idea of what to look for. For sure, man. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's normal. Like You want to size up the competition and also, exactly. you know, you're, 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 I mean, you like the sport. So you like watching newer well, teams and see what the, you know, the, the players are doing and, Who's kind of coming up and stuff? Exactly. I'm on their. Keep an um, eye on. I'm on their YouTube, but I don't see. They might not have posted the uh, the link for the live stream. I know they're still right. setting up cameras right now. I've was very fortunate enough that I've been in touch with uh, Harold, which who's their social media coordinator. Okay. He's over in the Netherlands. I've been talking with him over some of their social media stuff, and then yeah. I've actually got in touch with Adam about setting up a call with him to talk some of the business perspective of stuff. Okay. But he just says like, you know, we're really busy this weekend. It's like, no, totally understand. So right. I can imagine there, I mean, it's also like two 30 in the morning over in the Netherlands, right? In the Netherlands, so yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably not doing anything stream related. They're, they're just yeah. setting everything up still. Six hours ahead of us. I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 I was, uh, I was actually somebody from, um, NSL, uh, official that runs whoever runs the NSL official uh, Instagram page. That's Harold. Yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. Yep. He reached out to me um, two weeks ago and we haven't been able to set a time yet, but uh, we, well, we were kind of 
temporary schedule scheduled for uh, a time last week. Actually, it was the day after I talked with um, Adam mm -hmm. and uh, and then it fell through. So um, I've been trying to get a hold of him again to, but with all this going on. <laughs> yeah, they've know. been, they've been very busy and they're, and right. uh, I don't know who necessarily you'll end up, if you go in for like a podcast, I'm not sure who you will necessarily talk to. Right. Uh, I know that they'll definitely come on and, and speak a lot from the business perspective, like Monk and the really the less of the game and sport and more from the business perspective of yeah. how they're running their, their season, which will probably be very, very interesting to hear from. It's a different perspective from be like, you know, you basically had like Adam is like one of the commissioners of, you know, he is the owner of Monk USA. Right. So he'd be like, I don't want to use like Roger Goodell because that's not a great picture to paint to begin with. But like, <laughs> Um, uh, how dare you well, Adam we're sorry bro no. yeah we're sorry Adam much love buddy uh, but like that idea that that recognition I mean he's one of the top of the top you know he runs all the the monk the NSL USA stuff so right. he's you know that that's, that was a great perspective to have then from the European side of things I think right. will be huge as well the US market in my opinion from what I've seen will be even though it's newer, it's going to overtake the European market. Oh, I 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. Not because the Europeans aren't doing well. I mean, you still have like S2N, like the best team in the world, und like undisputed best team in the world. Really? They will probably – oh, easy. Like you – anyone who's in the the speed soft culture, like you have to – you can't be like, oh, I'm a speed softer. The edgy guys who run around at fields, <laughs> that doesn't count. The guys who – the competitive speed, speed soft players right. that are tapped into the culture – that are you know everyone's very connected you've had said that yeah. everyone's very very tightly knit you know we mm -hmm. know who people are this that and the other s2n if you ask people a majority especially in the nsl community who do you think the best team in the world is s2n really? without a doubt i've they watched just, them play they, they are just amazing. followed me uh yesterday on instagram they are cool yeah there's some there's some cool ass dudes i want to yeah. i want to have them on yeah oh uh, you hit them up i have no doubt that they'll be down to talk to you i think they're from uh God, they might roast me if I get this wrong. It's either the Netherlands or Belgium. They're they're one of the two, which gotcha. they're next to each other. Um, right. But they're they're yeah, like you want to talk about like they are the only guys I would say right now that are professional. Like these, I think that's are what Houdini said dudes. too. Yeah. 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 Like second to none. You know, top like, of the top. S two N. Yeah. Like they played. Um, Speaky B did an event at um dreamhack in the netherlands in 2019 they did a european championship oh nice pqb event s2n played syg in the championship syg didn't get cooked but this is one of the time when syg was like the team to beat and s2n handled them like no easily. problem yeah not yeah i mean they S, syg gave him a fight but like s you could see like it oh, wasn't a struggle God, you, that much you it realized you put it put the europeans as like okay the europeans actually kind of know what they're doing like you a lot of people brush them aside being like oh well it's not as famous over there they're not gonna know what they're doing and then you it was like a you know like okay never mind we were sorry like we took you for granted because <laughs> they they put up and they beat syg in their full like crew of guys played yeah you know which was impressive so i gotta right. you know everyone's gonna make this well, well you know they were using broken guns or you know this that and the others like any team that can take down a decent squad of syg players when they were in their prime, deserves credit. They've yeah. slowly started to, you know, dwindle into more of a marketing standpoint. Not that they don't play, but they're not competing as often. And that's oh, okay for the most part pretty general knowledge. Not nothing against them. Again, yeah. Roy, love them. Demo, love them. Marty, Rusta, Phantom, like all of them. Got to meet all of them when they came out. So homies, but nice. they just don't compete in the same way anymore like okay. they did in their prime. Right, right. So yeah, that I would definitely take a look at all of this stuff because I think you'll be from a sports perspective, just as a sports fan, you're like, oh shit, this looks cool. Right, like, I want to go do that. Like, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm very interested. I, I'm even more. That's the thing. See, this is what happens. I start talking with these guys like you, uh, Adam and Houdini, and all these guys. You know, I am Dylan. Uh, you know, Nebula, Airsoft. Uh, like, the, I'm just. And I keep seeing like all that, you know, hearing all these, all these stories and all this, uh, you know, stuff that's going on and anticipation and hype about it, you know, leading up to it and everything. So it's, uh, it's been fun for me, 
because it's given me something really interesting to kind of follow. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the, the thing is, mil sims are cool. You get the, you know, military style, like fucking you, you were never in the military. Maybe you never, you know, couldn't go in or whatever, but mm -hmm. you want to fly in a helicopter, go ahead. Yeah. You know, you want to fucking oh, yeah. play night ops with fucking NVGs, go ahead. Like all the cool shit. Yeah. But it, as a, as a um, spectator of the sport and it doesn't talking spectate with you, well. It doesn't really, bro. You like, and not only that, it's you know, and there's some cool stories. You know, when I'm, oh, when yeah, I'm talking to people, there's uh, really cool stories, but that you know, that come out of these mill sims. But um, there's the competitive side. There, nobody cares who won. <laughs> That's really foreign to me. I don't understand oh, yeah, that. Not... So I'm not exactly. saying it has to be. I understand there's a lot more involved in a mill sim. It's the camping. It's the whole, right. you know, the, the, the whole package. Um, right you know, is, is way more fun. So I understand that it's, eh, okay. You know, we still had a really good time and it was fucking awesome, you know, and this and that, well, who won? Eh, you know, whatever, right. but it's not important. Yeah. Um, dude, this fucking timer, bro. I think it's a, it's a, no, it is a 40 minute time. Yeah. It's 40 minutes. We've each gotten lost in all this. Dude, conversation. It's, no, it's, I mean, it's that's why I'm saying time. it's just, you know, but no, this is cool. It's fine. We'll just, uh, we pick up where we left off if, you know, if we have to do it, but, um, but anyway, now I'm like, I'm so interested. This is something I can actually follow and see. Right. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I think is more engaging, you know, for a spectator. Uh, this is, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I was going to say, it's like, yeah, I mean, and you can, you can, you know, if you want to put it in privately, so you're not revealing exactly where you live, but I wouldn't mind knowing hey. because yeah, because I don't see, I know people, some people don't want to know exactly like, oh, this is where they're from. So you don't, you know, I don't have give a fuck, bro. I never got a PO box. I never got, when I first started our YouTube channel, you know, people were like, they want to send us fan mail. Right. I put our, I put our, uh, my address right on my YouTube about thing. I didn't even Oh my fuck. God. I, so there's one video I did like a month ago, two months ago, you know, something like that. Uh, did a, like a little short or something for Instagram. Mm -hmm. I showed, I was videoing the, uh, some package or something that I got and yeah. it was, you know, it has my name and address on there. And so one of the, one of the guys that I, you know, he's trying to be polite. He was trying to be nice. He was like, I had him on the podcast a while ago and he goes, uh, Hey man, I just, you know, he DM me. I just want to let you know, you doxed yourself with the, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck, bro. <laughs> if somebody wants to come here, come on. You know, we'll, I mean, we're, you know, we just, We'll just hang out, whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess if it gets to, you know, I'm, we're not, nobody knows me, you know what I'm saying? Like I, well, hey, I don't look, have stalkers. I, <laughs> no, which again, knock on wood, you know, hopefully you never get to that point, but like, yeah. you know, you've gotten a lot of traction. I will say from, you know, I found you from Hudson's video. Cause it came out. It's like, some of my buddies had was like, yo, Hudson went on a podcast. And then I started doing my own research. Like, Oh, he said some hype. I didn't even know that one of my best friends, Garrett, was on your podcast back in October. Bro, and so that's ago. my own exactly. I'm like, that's my own fault. So like, it's definitely gaining traction in the competitive side now that you've had, again, having like Adam, like having some of these really high profile people, well yeah. known. That's all traction. You're gonna see a big bump. But the reason I'm asking about the location is because it depends on like I know for like my family, my grandparents, when they want to, when they come out of Tampa to visit. It's about a seven and a half, eight hour drive, nine if you do the speed limit. You know? Gotcha. <laughs> right. Uh, I was going to say, we've got our tournament coming up, our NSL event in, in November. I was, okay. or not November, February. Good Lord. I was going to say, it's a long time. <laughs> no, in February, it's end of February. Uh, you know, if you're not oh, doing okay. anything, I want to formally invite you. Come on down, come check it out. I can work some things on my end about having, like, you know, whatever it needs to be set up in terms of logistics. Let me yeah. know. I highly suggest, hey, you know, and bring the boys down if you want. I think they would love to come see it. You know, we have our own, we got our competitive field, and then we have a whole skirmish field, like to just play normally. Like, you don't have yeah. to just compete to be there. Um, to run around. And when just when come, is this? This is the twenty fourth and twenty fifth of no of February. I keep want to say November of February. <laughs> yeah, it's not November, bro. No, it is not. But yeah, it's the twenty fourth. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last um, last weekend of of the month. Yep. So we have that and that's our going to be our big NSL event. And we've got a bunch of other events coming up throughout the year of, you know, various speed QB events in like the spring stuff going on in the summer. You know, we've got a CSL event in, in uh, August. Yeah. In August, the first week of August. So we've got a bunch of stuff, but I would highly suggest like 
come down, come check it out. And especially if you haven't played, if you've never played Airsoft before ever, right? Right. If you can, I highly recommend come out and just giving it a shot. And just to like, so you can then kind of get to see, now you've heard all these stories. You can see, okay, this is what they're talking about. Like, okay, yeah. I can see what all this hype is on. Like now I actually getting to do it and you'll find it. It's an absolute blast. Like crowd wise, you got people like that'll show up that we banging on the glass. We've got a whole, our arena, our field is set up like a hockey rink. So we've oh, got that's plexiglass. Cool. Yeah. So everyone can look in and watch as you know, if you've got people that are screaming and yelling at each other for call outs and you got the tracer BBs that are flying back and forth. It's intense. Yeah. That's cool as shit. Yeah. So I was like, you should definitely come check it out if you can. Cause I know that, uh, I mean, that's the closest field for you. That's going to have anything that's worth your time. I'm going to, I'm going to hit up one of my sons and see if, uh, or even JP and see if they're available that weekend. Because, uh, if I had, yeah, somebody to drive with down there, we'll fucking shoot down there. Absolutely. Um, stay over one night. What is it? Friday and Saturday. You said, so, uh, it's, it's the Saturday and Sunday. It's a two oh, day Saturday event. and Sunday, 25th so, and 26th. Okay. Oh, is that what? Wow. I was off my yeah. days. That's, ew. oh, well, but usually for like NSL, they'll be in on like the Wednesday or Thursday to set everything up. Friday is then kind of like our practice day our the walkthroughs to get everything set up tournament, Saturday, Sunday, everything's broken down Monday. Gotcha. So you can technically then leave, you know, Monday morning. Yeah. If you want to come in and really kind of see what everything's about, you're there for definitely four days because the Saturday, you're not doing anything. Friday is then the day to see everything kind of the behind the scenes when people aren't as busy. Because yeah. I would love to get all them meet you in person, have you, have you show you around. And I can't yeah, do that dude, if I'm competing, cool. obviously. I appreciate yeah. the invite, dude. Yeah, yeah I, no I love I love all this stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool as hell. Adam and will it's be not there, that long. I guarantee it's, uh, it, so. No, I'm in Simpsonville, South Carolina. So okay. um, in fact, I'm going to look up <clears> – <throat> How far it is, real quick? Because uh, yeah, I'm sure I know it's, it's not like that nine far. hours from Clemson, for example. That's my. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nine hour drive. That's not bad. No, it, they can. I mean, they're Especially they're getting with... up there, so they're like, we got to do it in two days. I can do it in a day. I'm oh, also yeah. I'm in my prime in college, so I mean it's different. But like at the same time, most people is like you can do a nine hour drive. You come in on a you know you leave early on a Friday morning. You get in on a Friday night evening oh, yeah. for dinner time. Come check it out. We're open. We're open seven days a week. Nice. Seven days a week. Fridays and Saturdays we're open till midnight from ten a.m. to midnight. So if you're in it like on Dude, the evening cool. for dinner time, we're there for another couple of hours. I'm right. going to be there that Friday night anyway, doing all of the prep work, talking to people, getting stuff sorted. Yeah. So, you know, come on by, come check it out. We can run a couple games, you know, just to, you got to come get into this now. You've done all these podcasts. I know, right? Try it out for real. I know. Let me see how far oh, yeah. Tampa is. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, this is, uh, uh, plus I love your all's weather. Okay. South Carolina oh, has good weather, but, Fuck, bro. Like two mornings <laughs> yeah. ago, we had goddamn 28 degrees. No, it was this morning. 28 yeah, I was degrees. Like my grandmother texted me. It, over. it was like, we have, it's frozen here. Or it was like, oh, we got frost dude. here. I'm like, yeah, it why? was uh, like 65 degrees here when I woke up. So <laughs> I'm like, why? What? Yeah. What is that has zero place in South Carolina? Okay. I was walking to class yesterday. It's, you know, end of January. It is full sun and 82 degrees. I'm sweating and it's January. So <laughs> I love you know, it. You I have people it. that are at the beach that are out tanning and whatnot. I'm like, what month is it? Oh yeah. It's January. Yeah. Eight hours, eight hour drive. Oh, okay. easy. easy. That's easy, dude. Well, I mean, you know, being from Cleveland, my in-laws have lived in uh, South, in right here. They live like uh, five minutes away from us or five mm -hmm. miles away from us. And, uh, we, before we moved here, we drove down here with the kids of a van full, a minivan full of five children and my, you know, my wife, uh, I don't know, two times a year for like 15 years, Oof. bro. So we, and it, you know, it's from Cleveland to here is, I think it was like a nine hour drive. It's 600 miles from okay. driveway to driveway when we came down here. And, um, and so, yeah. And sometimes it was like a 12 hour drive because kids ha are just bathroom messy. breaks and you know messy. snacks and you know <laughs> i didn't have to pee it's like why don't you go last time it's like Bro. i didn't have to go then like yeah that whole oh yeah. yeah oh yeah oh yeah uh-huh so yeah. yeah yeah that's not bad eight hours ain't bad yeah for real so i mean yeah okay. we'll absolutely keep in touch if there's any you know questions details i'm running 
I'm basically the logistics unit as well. So, hey, where where would you stay? You know, what's good for food in the area? Like, yeah. let me know. I will absolutely point you well, in I'm the right direction. I'm looking at this fucking uh, airline ticket. It's like an uh, hour. Yeah, you'd fly out of probably Greenville, Spartanburg to Tampa. Yep. You can do a direct. Yep. or Greenville, Spartanburg. If you go out of Greenville, it's actually a direct flight to uh, St. Petersburg. It's a it's... direct flight. Actually, there's a direct flight right to Tampa right here. Oh, it's perfect. 156 bucks. Round trip. Oh, that is Perfect. nothing, bro. Do it. I do it, man. <laughs> Holy do shit. it. Or also running out of time too. Oh my god. Okay, bro. My wife's gonna shit bricks when I tell her I'm traveling for, for your because job. we're we're Look planning a you're trip. Doing, you're doing it. <laughs> I'm like, honey, it's for the podcast, okay? Exactly. There you go. You do a live podcast in person. You could do a podcast. Right. Both people are right there. There's no Zoom call and none of that. Mm-hmm. Do it in person. Oh, shit. Speaking yeah, of that, like- this thing's at one minute. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, I'll see uh, you in a bit. Uh, hold on. Yep. All right. I promise this is the last time we'll do that. Oh, I don't – bro, did you see um, – if you scroll through – uh, the longest one I've had was with the uh, airsoft dad. Mm-hmm. So there's two airsoft dads that I've had on here. Yeah, I'm like, I saw that. Why do you change your name, please? Um, <laughs> so uh, the last one uh, came out this past week. It was um, it's the longest podcast I've done. It was over four hours, four hours and five minutes. Oh yeah, right. I'm I'm Holy not here to do that. <laughs> I've already gone like probably thirty minutes longer than I was expecting, but I was like. Just, I mean, if you got somewhere, bro, I don't, no, I don't, I, yeah, go I'm ahead. more worried about taking up your time at the end of the day. Cause oh. like, yes, I want to thank you so much for having me on. So I don't want to like take up oh, any more of dude, your own time. No, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, no, I appreciate, I mean, you know, I appreciate that obviously, but, uh, as, as good manners and respect, um, I'm the same way. And so I'm, I really leave it open when I schedule these to, uh, if somebody wants to talk for, and I'll let them know, like I do have another one tonight. But not until ten o'clock my time. So I got you know. Yeah, I will. Ten o'clock my time. I um. So I'm not. I don't. I don't ever. Like I said earlier, you know, like with uh, call sign rice. I don't. uh, When we were done, I don't make it. I don't try to force the conversation. Right. Yeah. If if I'm and and there's times that I just maybe I miss something and I forget to ask a question or I you know kind of get into deeper. I just make it to where like uh, we met in. In, in in person and just start chatting and that's what we're that's what we're right, talking yeah. about. Yeah, it flows naturally and that's kind of what this turned into. We've gone off yeah. like, talking about sports and uh, <laughs> motivational logic, to psychology, then and going over to the Netherlands and World Championships. We've been all over the map. I mean, it's hey, fucking it's, awesome, it's, dude. It's an yeah. absolute it's a vibe. But I yeah, love no, it. I love it. Yeah, I've I think that it's like yeah, if you you know interested and you want to do it, I definitely suggest you know yeah. come down to Tampa. I mean, it's February time, so the weather will be. You know, probably in my opinion, some of the best of the year yeah. because it's that perfect balance of not being too hot and not too cold. We're just coming out of like the winter cold, if you will, if you can even mm-hmm. call it cold. Right. Where, you know, and that's the other thing is that for our field, it's the best environment for our field. We're in a old kind of like boat, like warehouse looking thing, like the, the sheet metal warehouses, if you could imagine those. Yeah. So in the summertime, we don't really have like internal air conditioning in the actual warehouse itself so it gets hot in there sure in the february time when it's cold i was out there for um a scrim at like seven in the morning a couple weeks ago it was 45 degrees outside it was 51 degrees in the actual facility itself it was cold yeah so i can imagine in february you're it's not gonna be hot you won't break a sweat probably or if you you're breaking a sweat for the athletes that are playing yeah um but for the spectators you can sit there comfortably and like probably a long sleeve shirt and shorts and you'll be more than adequate out there. Oh yeah. And it's nice. You don't have to worry about sweating and bringing in like four pairs of clothes to change into because you have to do I actually, it. I prefer the heat. Um, okay. Especially lately. I, I always did. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd rather be sweating my ass off. Like even just, just standing in the sun. If it's just, you know, blazing, uh, I'd rather be sweating than cold, but even more, re- uh, even more so recently because of this uh, this illness, I have a lot of leftover nerve. Da- I don't know what it is, nerve damage, I guess. That mm-hmm. you know, but for whatever reason, when I get cold, like my hands get cold, I look like I have our. I can't even open my hands. Ooh. I get cramps and and twitches so bad. 
Yeah, uh, I can feel that, that I can't control my thing. I can't yeah. control my fingers. So it's very uncomfortable. Uh, I've been trying to work on my speaking of you know a part of that. I've been working on my Jeep over the last couple of weeks, uh, replacing the um, exhaust manifold. So it's a '96 uh, Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee. I'm pulling out the exhaust manifold, so I'm I'm trying to work on it. Well. Steel is fucking cold, bro. All oh, yeah. those parts are cold. So even when it's like 50 something during the day, sitting in the sun, and I get home from work and I try to work on it, it's, uh, I can do it a, about 10 to 15 minutes and my hand starts cramping up. Cause when you're trying to unbolt all these little things where you're oh. leaning over yeah. and you have to hold the bolt, you know, mm -hmm. um, or if, you know, I mean, if, if you let it fall, it falls, whatever. But, uh, my fingers cramp up. I can't even grab the fucking bolt. So, uh, or this one, <laughs> one of the days, you know, the, the sockets and ratchets. So the ratchet handle, yeah. and I have some pretty beefy ones like snap on tools and shit and I'm holding it and it's so cold. Um, I couldn't let go of it. My hand cramped around it and I wow. could, I don't like pry it out of my hand. So I'm like, okay, cold needs to go. I see these guys, um, treatments that, you know, like kind of self, uh, or at home treatments, or whatever that uh, mm -hmm. that's real popular right now for like nerve related uh, illnesses or whatever, is this uh, cold plunge, you know, the ice bucket shit and whatever. Yeah. No, I I, <laughs> I tried it. I tried it. I I I couldn't walk for like I don't know twenty minutes. I, I was like curled up and and paralyzed for like twenty minutes. <laughs> so I said I, I that's not for me. When I'm when I'm warm, if I'm sitting there sweating. I'm comfortable. Like, it's fine. I don't care. Whatever. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm not worried about it being like that type of cold to where your, you know, fingers are going numb. No, I'll, it's I will enough bring... to be where you could be comfortable in. Right. You, know, you could even, if you wanted to, if you were worried about, you go in a pair of sweatpants and like a hoodie. Yep. And if you really need it, you get hand warmers and tuck them in your pocket. You'd be fine. I've got these not... gloves, bro, that have the, the battery powered ones that are oh, you know, yeah. heated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it'll be that bad. In February, it typically starts to get a little bit warmer. So in the day, when it's 75, 80 degrees outside, it'll be in the low to mid 70s indoors. Anyway. So oh, yeah. It'll be room yeah. temperature indoors. You'll be That's fine. fine. As long as yeah. it's not 20 degrees, like it has, you no. know, let, you know, I can't. Warm. I've been in Tampa now for two and a half years, just about. I've never seen it go below 31. Yeah. And it was 31 for like maybe an hour at night one time. And after that, I mean, it was snowing apparently. My. My girlfriend's from Tampa and she lives over on the East coast of Florida. So she was, okay. she texted me during Christmas like, Oh, it's snowing in Florida on Christmas day. Meanwhile, I'm up in Rhode Island and it's like 52 degrees on Christmas day and sunny. I'm like, <laughs> it just, we, it flip we completely flipped. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, all right, that makes sense. Um, oh, that's so wild. I know. Yeah. But yeah. No, I'm not worried about it being, um, I'm not worried about it being cold. It'll be very comfortable here. You know, now we'll go into your, you know, that, that February, um, tournament, the NSL tournament in uh, Tampa. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, so your guy, your team, you guys mm -hmm. are, are prepping for playing in that tournament. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, it's hard to, um, it's, it's not hard to quick, explain. Man. It is. And the, the way the season or the season structure is broken out to originally when we were planning this back in like November, December, when we were doing the work in the rebrand, NSL had come out with that they were going to play eight tournaments in the U.S. for the season, basically two at each venue. So two in Sacramento, two at Indiana, two here in Tampa, and two in Rhode Island. They cut it in half because it had to do with logistics with the referee crew, and that's what makes NSL as nice as it is. They have a dedicated ref crew that travels the Bro, world. You have so to. They ha they're going back that's and forth awesome. between the U.S. and the Netherlands, so they can't <sighs> schedule eight tournaments here and then another like seven or eight that are over then in the Netherlands. It's too much right. traveling for the guys. You just can't do it. So they cut it in half and made it four. So each venue has one like regular season seeding tournament is what they're calling them. Mm. I equate them to your – think of it like for college basketball, your conference championships, that yeah. conference tournaments. Then for the national championship, which is up in Rhode Island – is it's the top 15 teams that competed for the season are qualify for nationals and it's based on your points so you get a, a 300 points for winning 200 for second 100 for third 75 for fourth 50 for or whatever so on and so forth and you work your way down the list yeah 
the 15 teams with the most amount of points after four tournaments will then get like their bids, like the NCAA tournament, for example, to go to the national championship. And then you go. The only problem that, you know, and that's nothing against the NSL guys, but it definitely works its way out to being the guys with the deepest pockets are going to go through autumn regardless, even regardless of you being good or not, because the more tournaments you play in, the more points you're eligible to obtain. Sure. So we looked at it from a standpoint of, okay, if we win one of the tournaments, our Tampa tournament, we should be okay mathematically. We should be top 15. Mm. And then as we started realizing tacos, East Coast Energy, um, SCA, like some of these teams that are going to play in all four of these events, all they have to do is finish top five in each of those events. And they already have more points than us, than us just winning one event. Oh, you know, wow. just mathematically. So it puts a little bit of emphasis and stress on us to, hey, we need to go Travel. play in another event. Yep. California is too expensive to pull 12 guys. Yeah. For half of us who are in school still, a couple in college, some are still, we still have a couple of high schoolers actually that are on our team. Right. You can't pull high schoolers out of school for a weekend <laughs> for yep. five, six days to go across the country. And then you have guys who are working full-time jobs at the same time. You can't pull them out to do this. Right. So traveling becomes a problem. And then it's a money thing. Sure. And that's, you know, and again, Adams was mentioning this in terms of the sponsorships. Teams are trying to find ways to monetize their brand, their team to pull in money to cover travel expenses and whatnot. We did the math to go to Rhode Island. We are going to Rhode Island for March for the third event. So we're playing seating event two and three, and then most likely the national championship because we're pretty confident we'll be top 15 in the country. Yeah. If we we looked at it as our, as our own preset goal for the season when it started, what is our goal for the season? Make it to nationals, not win, make it. If we don't make nationals, we see that as a total fail on the season. And I, gotcha. I have no problem saying that publicly. I mean, that everyone on our team will agree. We don't right. make nationals, that's a fail for us. Sure. We had, we're trying to figure out the logistics to get 12 guys up to Rhode Island. Speaking from being from Rhode Island, it's a lot cheaper to fly down to Tampa than it is to Rhode Island because of the destinations. It's more mm. popular to come down than it is to go up. Right. So you're looking to have 12 people go up plus tournament fees, plus travel expenses, you're easily sitting $4,000 for just one event, easily. What is the drive up there? We, we looked at that. It's 12, uh, 19 and a half. 19 and a half. <laughs> 19 and a half. So we're like, yeah, let's grab like a, you know, we looked at renting an RV as a matter of fact. Like I shit you not. We looked at renting yeah. an RV, um, renting an RV to just drive it all the way up there. Then we realized right. what it was going to cost for gas to do that yep. and then the to rent the rv it was actually more expensive than flying so we said you know what screw <sighs> it we're gonna go and we're gonna do the flight we'll fly you know we'll find the sponsors that we need to at least mitigate as much of the travel costs as possible the rest that is left over from sponsorships just comes out of pocket you know you want to you know you got to do it unfortunately it is what it is but it's what happens it's a grassroots part of the sport you know yeah you gotta spend I mean, money to make sport. money yeah exactly. it's uh you know you're not gonna if you don't branch out um, if you just play locally, you know, even if you're like gung ho as fuck, like just practicing, you know, three times a week uh, and then playing a game, let's say you practice Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, your team gets together at your local field, you play every Saturday, you play a game, you know, yep. or multiple games against how many local teams are there, how many local teams could be in Tampa, you know, that are as serious as you guys. That not are going to give you the exactly. competition level right. that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to happen. So you're going to no. have to, no matter what, you, you know, yeah, you got to, you got to travel. Um, even if it's just within your own state, you're still, once you get over, you know, drive time, once you get over like seven hours drive time, you gotta, you're going to have to spend the night probably. Unless oh, you easily. have, you know, unless you take turns driving there and back, you know, it's, uh, you know. I mean, it's if, three and a half hours for us from Tampa to the, for, to the Florida Georgia line. Yeah. And that was literally a conversation that we were just having Luke and I, and then, you know, Mikey and Garrett, the coaching staff and whatnot is that, you know, no disrespect to the teams that we're playing against here, but because the culture is so new, it's very hard to have teams that are as dedicated in terms of the time put in and right. the, the commitment. So trying to find teams that are on at least level pegging, and I'm trying to, word this so it doesn't come off egotistical but from a realistic perspective it's few and far between which is why we're trying to branch out and that's been a not a concern but a curiosity going into the nsl is that down here in florida 
you know, I think most teams would agree that are in this localized region that we are one of the better teams in the state for sure. I mean, we do like, that's like, that's what the belt was the kind of show for. I mean, that belt symbolizes, you know, you clearly can do something, Yeah, but we have no frame of reference on how we stack up two teams Mm -hmm. that are from the West coast. I mean, we played West coast teams when they came to Florida, we had teams from Puerto Rico, California, from all over the country played in our regional and kind of got us a stack up of, okay, where do we sit? We won it. Great. But now we're going up another caliber of teams that we're playing that, you know, like these are the best of the best. Like, this exactly. was franchised one day. You've got probably half these teams. We're expecting 40 teams to play over four tournaments, 40 different Ooh, teams. Damn. You could probably take 10 or 15 of the 15 teams that make the nationals. You could realistically say could franchise could be re- like looked as a franchise league. Yeah five, 10 years down the road, be franchised, you know, like you would in paintball. You know, that's why we wanted to build, like we will be hopefully, you know, knock on wood, you know, the Tampa Bay, whatever, or Tampa, whatever, you know, be the franchise team in Florida. That's, that would be an awesome, you know, optimistic goal. Right. Of ours. And then, oh, okay. We have a match against, you know, the Los Angeles, you know, uh, whatever, Los Angeles, something, whatever their yeah, thing is. Exactly. Cool. You know, you got to go fly. I got, I got a play. name for you. I got a name for you. Okay. The Brady Bros. <laughs> Tampa Brady Bros. Okay. <laughs> Tampa Bay Brady, Brady Bros. That's that's a mouthful. Um, uh, but yeah, like you. No, you we're not Brady's to... fans. What? Well, no, I don't think most of the people on my team would agree with that. Be like, you know, Brady Band Wife, whatever. So, Doesn't matter, yeah. bro. You're the head of the team. You tell them, okay? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I think that that should go over great with my <laughs> with my bosses and and whatnot. I'm the head of the team. You need to listen to me. Yeah. So that yeah. Rick and Morty says, like, you need to listen to me. He's like. You know, like, so no, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that would be the aw- ultimate goal is I've right. followed a lot of like the esports side of things, like with professional call of duty and counter-strike and Valorant and how they went franchised and they franchised, you know, like the call of duty. Yeah. That would be next level. Like, uh, dude, I think this is going to happen faster than a lot of people think. I would hope so. With- I think it is. I think there's a, I think you guys have, and I mean Airsoft in general, but um, Speedsoft has a very unique, I I think all the things are lining up for this to kind of take off way faster than we think. So coming out, Airsoft in general, just all of it has exploded in the last, you know, year and a half, right? People come out of lockdowns. I think it's, you know, I'm guessing, but I'm thinking it's coming out of lockdowns. People were watching mm-hmm. a shit ton of YouTube. Absolutely. Um, you know, all the big YouTubers were, were you know, for Airsoft, uh, you know, players were, were getting like suggested feeds, you know, and, yeah. and everyone's thing. And uh, and so what do they want to do when they come out? Uh, they're allowed to get back out of the house and go everything, opening it back up. Well, let's go do this. So yeah. <clears throat> that part of it is feeding the, the whole thing. At, all at once and then you've got a so you've got a huge influx of uh new players that that are really interested and then new fields popping up everywhere that are very successful right out of the gate yeah that never used to happen you know a lot of the old like 10 years ago airsoft fields they weren't there weren't there wasn't really a lot of airsoft fields by themselves there was uh paintball fields that were converted exactly paintball fields that were still paintball fields and the owner would be like, okay, yeah, y'all can, uh, you know, you can try it out. Can, use can, yeah, can play yeah. over here in this little corner uh, for half the day, you know. Exactly. And now it is, uh, you know, this MK Airsoft. I talked with uh, Gabriel uh, up in Ohio, places that people never even heard of, bro. Um, you know, there's a, he, he's opened up his third field. Like in well, the next, for him. Yeah. He just started his first field two years ago. So Good for him. Wow. It is, and these are indoor fields. They're big, you know, 30,000 square feet. Um, wow. Jesus. Yeah, big. He's got yeah. buses, giant buses in them and fucking platforms everywhere. Uh, really cool setups. But so all of this, all of these things are happening together. And now the NSL comes over here and is setting up. Here's what we're doing. This is the, this is the standard. This is the, and, and when people heard that, speed softers heard that, teams that have been playing for a while, that are good uh heard that they're like oh shit okay nsl now we're serious yeah. like it's on the next level 
So you got a really good combination of things all just working together to just propel this thing. And of course, uh, cameras are a lot cheaper now. Yep. Uh, so, oh, we can live stream. Yeah. Yep. And it's a good connection. You know I mean? Like three years ago, you try to live stream somewhere. It might not work that well. No, know, it, was it was never fluid. Yeah. Uh. -uh. And then the, the cameras, um, especially action cams, didn't have the uh, light sensor uh, good enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you're indoors, oh, yeah. it's grainy as fuck, you know, um, especially with the, you know, high um, frame rate that you want to run for action, you know, to yeah, capture to that catch stuff. everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the premise or the idea or goal, dream, whatever you want to call it, that I could realistically see happening is I'll take Florida, for example, is I could see that as the league start to branch out, we'll use NSL, for example, is the other fields that are in Florida that are indoors, because you can really only play NSL indoors. It's a lot harder to do outdoors because you got then wind and they got a lot of strict yeah. regulations. But you've got like fields like up, one's up in Jacksonville. You've got another one that's... Uh, uh, see, I'm not well, very well versed with indoor fields in Florida because I only know Tampa like really well right. and then some of the other ones. But, you know, one down in Miami and a couple little odds and ends that are over in the state. Yeah. They could be like satellite fields for NSL that host qualifier events. Mm. And then you have teams that say that each win their qualifier like, districts, like you would in high school sports, you each win your district. Right. They all then come and converge on Tampa and Tampa then holds like your state or regional championship. Gotcha. You have a couple teams that qualify from that, that then go play your national competitions at, you know, California, Rhode Island, or you host it down here in Tampa or whatever. And it kind of just builds that tier system eventually of, you know, you right. get smaller because what it comes down to is exposure. And that's what you're talking about with the cameras. And mm -hmm. that's the stuff that I'm studying in, in college. I'm studying, I'm listed as a communications major, but my, gotcha. my focus is social media management and development. So right. learning how to market and brands, how to develop a brand via social media and without exposure through your media, people, you don't exist in this day and age. No, That's why it's been such a high pre you know preface on that's why I got into video editing as well. It's just editing. Like I, you know, I can even tell you how many hours a week I spend here at my desk editing on top of going to school and practice to push out stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's how I decided that's what YouTube got me doing is just keep branching that stuff out and ideally going to go do this stuff for a career to be a sports editor or mm -hmm. you know, a video. Yeah. But that's what I've now realized is that in this day and age, especially with such a niche sport or niche idea. Those big sponsors, like I can, you know, I got some sponsors that I can, you know, I can give you that I won't name publicly, but I can tell you privately that you'd be like, they're coming to Airsoft potentially I said, yeah, like working those connections of really big name sponsors that are parts of, you know, the NFL, you know, MLS, MLB, NHL, your big sports leagues. Then look at Airsoft, you're like untapped market. It's a low risk, high reward environment. Exactly. Why not? Give it a shot and see. Yep. If it doesn't work, okay, so you lose out on a couple thousand dollars, which to these companies is literal chump change. You, yeah, you make that real. in the time that it takes for you to send the payment over. Right. Um, give it a shot. It doesn't work out. Oh, well, you learn. If it does work, you start making money hand over fist and this yep. thing in, you know, explodes and just right. goes viral. And that's the goal, and that's where that exposure comes. That was the driving force for the documentary, really. Was I, I'm really curious to watch that. I do have another podcast tonight later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will. Not, I'm no, I'm not trying to cut anyway. us off. I'm saying uh, I, I want to watch that um, on there. Uh, you said it's on the uh, NSL? No, it's on the CIA. I can I mean the send, CIA, you, I can send you the link if you if you want it. That's yeah, no big deal. I can send you the link. Absolutely. Yeah, I just get popcorn candy ready because it's it's seventy two minutes long. It's it's a it's I mean it's a full on you know documentary that follows your a like, full. Like, I see it six, right here. Seven months. Yeah. Five it's still on, standing. Yep. I'm gonna watch that later, dude. Like for real. It's. I'm gonna watch it, that later tonight, <clears throat> after my other uh, podcast. Um, yeah, I'm really it's, interested. It was it was very good. I I you know enjoyed the I enjoyed building it. Yeah, it's kind of really what pushed that level of you know if anyone asked well what's your best piece of work you've ever done, it would definitely be that. Gotcha. Um, I pride myself very highly in the work that I try and put out. I do try and put a lot of effort into those types of things, sure. and 
it was definitely a different spin for me. I, as documentary or, you know, formal interview sit downs was cool. I never really tapped into it until I just got this idea watching. Um, I was watching a documentary that was called Undefeated. And it's on Netflix now. And it's a true story about a Memphis, Tennessee high school football team that was literally winless the season before. Yeah. And they go on to go undefeated and go. Basically, it's the real version of Saturday night or Friday night lights. Excuse me. Friday night lights. I think and, I, I think I saw that. Um, yeah, I can't remember. It was that a sounds student really made, familiar. It was student made, whatever. It wasn't picked up any film festivals. And then it right. eventually got picked up and it just went viral. And that mm -hmm. was kind of the driving force of it. And another one was all the big esports organizations they're doing basically like episode like a tv series of their stuff going on when they're playing you know in various tournaments all over the country in the world yeah. like let's bring that to airsoft because you need that's your yeah. exposure you need to build not just what the sport is doing but you need to build personability because right. at the end of the day it's like okay you play sports but if you have the audience has no connection driven to uh -huh. that specific individual or those individuals no one's going to be it, it solves the whole so what why do i care right then you you know it's your character development why do i is like oh because i like him yep demo is a prime example of that mm -hmm. of you know why does syg as famous as they are regardless of being you know speakeb's marketing tool and you know, name recognition, Demo helped bring that in with his 100,000 plus subscribers. Everyone knows SYG because of that now. Yeah. That's the exposure. That's the idea that we're really trying to harp on is market the individual, the player, as well as the team, because that in the long run is what's going to pay out, right? both monetarily and like what do you want? intrinsically. You're going to feel it as like, you yeah. know, oh, wow, I did that. You know, we did that. Exactly. Well, see, that's yeah. what I like seeing. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of people are starting to do different styles of videos now yeah. for airsoft so you know we have the gameplay stuff of course unboxing reviews right and then what else is there then there's podcasts and most of the podcasts what's that compilations like, yeah you know, exactly best moments right. you know yeah. all that stuff but yeah and cheater videos you know yeah those are compilations <laughs> i threw that in that big you know right bucket. Uh, and then recently, uh, Airsoft or Sam, she um, she started doing like uh, on the spot uh, interviews, just real short, mm -hmm. uh, at the field um, where she's at, you know, and just real short clips, uh, you know. So it kind of like what you were talking about, you know, that character development, you know, getting to yeah. know the player on the field. Uh, Ruby Ruby Gold does the same thing, um, you know, or started doing the same thing. So it's. Uh, this is, and that's what I'm trying to do here, um, is kind of get all these different players that are, that really don't have a big following, don't have, you know, really haven't, uh, you know, they've been, they have a lot of experience with Airsoft uh, and they love the sport, but they're not, you know, they don't have, they have a couple hundred followers or subs on YouTube or whatever, right. you know, or a couple thousand and then uh, a couple hundred on, on uh, Instagram or something. And uh, I love talking to new players, man. I love talking to not new as far as oh, I just started like two weeks yeah, ago, but up and coming talent, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah people yeah. that are excited and passionate about what they're doing, right. uh, and they don't, you know, it's like it just it blows my mind how <clears throat> when when you find somebody that it has a, a really long history in what they're doing, uh, longer yeah. than what you expect, you know. Because I find everybody online. So I don't know anything about them. So right. I only see what I what I can see. So, you know, and, and it's what we do with everybody, you know, on, on social media. So, oh, uh, their Instagram has three, 400 followers. They're, um, so they're, okay, so maybe they're fairly new on Instagram or maybe they don't post a lot, whatever. Right. Um, you know, YouTube might be a little kind of small or, I mean, I consider mine small to be honest, uh, really. Like anything under 100,000 is fairly small. Well, in the uh, airsoft community, it yeah. that was kind of where it comes down to the content side of things is when right. you have a saturated market where it was like the amount of people that I've had DM me or ask questions both in through DMs and you probably get this a lot as well is how do I start doing you know YouTube or how do I start doing airsoft YouTube and it's like I don't want to make it sound like oh, I'm trying to discourage because like don't do it. Yeah. My advice turns into. You need to be prepared that it is a very competitive market because of how niche it is. Yeah. How the question I turn around to is you want to do YouTube. Okay. That's fine. How are you going to make yourself different than the other 
hundred channels that yeah. just started doing the exact same idea. And that's right. what I've really started to try and change to is be different. You know, yeah. how can I make a difference in the set of, you know, building that identity of, oh, they do gameplay. No, they were the ones that did the documentary. They're the ones that yeah. did, you know, the custom build and trying something out and whatever. Like it, it's an identity. What makes you different? You have to find that, that niche. And once you hit it, 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 it goes viral. It does. That's where you're viral, but you didn't consistently be able to market that. Exactly. Idea. Well, that's the other thing too I found is with Airsoft uh, is one of the things that – well, especially with podcasts, you know, because that's what I've studied uh, yeah. the last few months for sure is like, you know, look, how can I get better? What can I – and uh, there's not a lot to go on to be honest. There's um, – there, the Airsoft podcast, there's a few – there's just a couple, maybe a, one off the top of my head – Gorilla uh, Airsoft Radio, mm -hmm. been around for a lot of, long time. Uh, they're probably the most consistent one for that many years. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, as far as release, you know, releasing a podcast or whatever. Oh my God, this thing. It's all good. No, it's all good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I yeah. Can, well, I will allow you to wrap that. We can wrap this up in the next 10 minutes. Anyway, do not <laughs> for sweat sure. It. But anyway, the, the, the point is, you know, the, when, when these guys – when they start, uh, the, the podcast that I've seen, um, is that they, they don't either, if they are consistent, they don't mm -hmm. have fresh content. So it's very mundane. Um, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's two guys or three guys or four guys that are friends that play together and they talk about last week's game. Well, how many times can you do that every single week? It Can also asks the question every, to the viewer of why do I care? Like, no, it's I don't want to make that sound rude, but it's, well, the first it's time that right, like if you exactly. just found it, you listen to one episode, you're like, man, this is cool. You know, they have cool stories to tell. But then you listen to the second one, it's like, okay, maybe there's one little different thing that happened. Exactly. And then the next one is, oh, this is the same. They they run out of shit to talk about, and I think that's why a lot of them fall off. I think that's why a lot of them don't have consistent content to come out. So, it, you know, airsofters that like, you, like kicking Mustang, he tells a story, right? He, he makes you in, engage. Like you don't want to look away. You want to, he's got the music going. He's got the voiceover. Right. It's it as much is, storytelling as anything. It's entertainment. Right. That's right. what people forget. It's still entertainment. Exactly. There's, when there's no entertainment, you have to keep that attention in people. I mean, with our attention span being as short as it is now. Yeah. You have to find new ways to keep people engaged or they're just going to click off and move on to the next thing because it's not serving that. We have so many options. Looking for. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. These, te these, uh, these guys that are – and girls that are uh, throwing – they're slapping a GoPro in their helmet. They go out and play every weekend. They don't edit. No. They stick the gameplay up there and they don't have a scope cam. It's like, bro, right. that, that you're, you're not going to get – no. Like you're almost doing yourself a disservice by exactly. doing that because you're making it too um it, it just you're not you're not grabbing anyone's attention. The scope cam thing, because I, I will speak to that when I started doing the Milsom stuff, is I didn't run a scope cam. Yeah. If you're not gonna run a scope cam, you almost have to then edit your stuff heavily to at least keep the changing of pace. Yeah. It, that all the scope cam is just another perspective. You can see what's going yeah. on. I was never at the distance or the the player that was at such far distance. Every time I was it was hitting someone, I was at a distance enough that my GoPro on my head could see oh, what I was shooting. Okay. So I you could zoom in. But I was focusing on the editing of at least keep it entertaining and go. Go, go, right. go. Keep it fresh. And, if, and I stopped worrying about the time, the duration of the video. I think if I take one game and it's a 15-minute game and I cut it down to what I feel is worth it and it's three and a half minutes – then that's what it is. But it's engaging and it's like, exactly. oh, this is entertainment. It's like a trailer. Go, send it. Exactly. You'll have more watch time in the long run because at least it's entertaining. People will send it yes. rather than having a 15-minute game where you know five people watch it compared <laughs> to a three-minute thing where 100 Bro. people watch it. When we uh, when we started our you channel, I didn't that. know any of this stuff. I had to learn the same thing. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at all these videos, and they're like recommending, you know, oh, at least ten minutes, you know, video, whatever. That gets in like now, ad this is, stuff. This is three right. That gets into mon you know monetizing. Yeah. You know, have this consistency of this long yep. of a video, blah blah blah. And some, you know, we're doing unboxings, and my tendency was, I'm going to edit the way I want to see it. Like when I'm done with this video, this it, this has to be something I would want to watch. And yeah. if it's fucking drawn out and, and dude, I just can't do it. I, I said right from the beginning, I said, I don't, I don't give a shit. 
if it's monetized, uh, whatever, if I, it doesn't, that's exactly how you look at it. I, I'm going to do this because I'm, I'm enjoying it and hopefully somebody else likes it. I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm just, gonna, I'm not going to leave all the extra shit in. Right. Um, just so it's 10 minutes. I just, I can't do it. So yeah. I've had a bunch of comments in the beginning of our channel where uh, people were saying, thank you for not, you know, holy crap, you know, like an unboxing that wasn't, you know, 25 minutes or whatever of get to paper, the good stuff. You That's know, what we want to see just the loud ass yep. you know, with paper yeah. and, you know, and throwing the box off the side and whatever. I cut so much out. And you have um, to. I just, I just, I'm like, you know, Okay. And I'm not saying I did that to everyone and I was perfect on everyone. It was just, I, and I have treated our channel that way since we started and I never changed. I didn't, I didn't care. I'm not going to make it extra for whatever. Uh, the podcast, same thing. There's no restriction on language, on topic, on whatever. We just have a co uh, conversation yeah. and wherever it goes, it goes. It's fine. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not looking for likes and clicks and whatever the fuck, bro. Like I'm just being me. And you be right. you. And, exactly. and that's just, how it should be. Yeah. I, I think, just, yeah. I'm trying to like from, and that was something that I was trying to learn is, is, is and people forget that is that, you know, everyone's trying to do the whole clout chasing. That stuff doesn't yeah. come overnight. It takes a lot of hard work. There's a reason why only a few amount of people actually get there is that it takes yeah. a lot. I mean, man, I could tell you, I, I can't even tell you the amount of times I've agenda considered just giving up doing YouTube altogether. Cause I was either couldn't be consistent. I didn't have enough time. I wasn't interested in sure. doing it, whatever. And then you realize you keep going back and asking yourself, well, no, I'm doing this because I, I have a drive for right. it. I want to keep doing this. Yep. And it's from that entertainment. And I, I got obsessed with the, the marketing piece of things. And that's really what drove uh, me to do all of my, the major stuff. It's like, what do I want to do for a major? I'm like, I really kind of enjoy this. Yeah. Uh, how to push a brand, an idea, an image. And while I've kind of started to alienate away from the original image that I had, you have mm -hmm. to in order to keep up with the times. So yeah, you know, I've had a bunch of comments like, man, I wish you kept saying playing Milsim. I don't really care for speed soft stuff. I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> I lose a subscriber here and there. So what? I'm building new ones. It's about yeah. the exposure at the end of the day. And the people who are genuinely dedicated that want to watch my stuff regardless of what I post are the people that I want to have around. Sure. Because those are the people that are there for the content as well as, well as they appreciate the stuff that I post, you know? And right. that's not the knock to people who are there just because why not? I'm like, yeah, sure. But at the same time, you can never be, you know, you can never please everybody. So you just no. post the content that you want to post as the individual. The people will come later. We'll yeah. come and watch that later. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And before we well, get off on another tangent, I was like, we should probably keep an eye on the time. <laughs> no <laughs> shit, right? But yeah. Uh, bro, listen, I, I got a I got a task for you. Okay. Before okay. we talk the next time, before I have you on again, because I'll have you on again in a couple months or whatever. Uh figure out how to get your what you call it working with your Mac. And then we won't have a time limit. Okay. That's true. Yeah. I honestly what I could just do is I just say <laughs> screw the quality. Don't worry about the quality. I'll just run the the Mac FaceTime camera. I call it a day. I fix the background and we just screw it. You, you could know? do no that too. I'm not, yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, most people um, listen to these on like Spotify and all that shit. Then, uh, then, then watch it. So yeah. No big deal then. It's okay. cool. It's cool. I appreciate that then. Thank you oh, so much dude, for having yeah. me on here. Seriously. Of course, man. Well, tell everybody where they can find you and your team and all your, all your cool so, stuff. It's Striker Entertainment on YouTube and Instagram. I definitely recommend go check out the CIA Instagram and YouTube as well because that is where a lot of the stuff going on from the Speedsoft competitive side of things. And the team Instagram is currently still being worked on, so that will get posted on the CIA stuff in the future. It's just all the logistics and bureaucracy that goes along with it to get to that, <laughs> that point. But I hope to see you down in Tampa. If you have any questions, I'm always here. Hit me up, whatever you need. I'm here to answer any of those questions that you want. And uh, I would love to keep in touch because I have a doubt, no doubt that there will be questions for watching NSL and oh, yeah. uh, the documentary. Any questions you got, fire away. I will. No I might be sending you some tomorrow because I'll be watching some of that stuff tomorrow. Absolutely. Get that popcorn ready. I'm telling you. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was, awesome, it was a lot man. of fun. Well, thank All you right. so much, man. I appreciate thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brother. Have a good later. night. Yeah, you too, man.